adoption of the minutes from the September 22nd, uh, 2021 ASB meeting. Everybody had a chance. Uh, Mr. Clerk moves the minutes be approved. All those in favor and carried. Um, we don't have anybody zooming in watching, do we? Uh, other than Dave and, and non board. Yeah. So I guess we don't want any introductions today. I guess it's just our own board here. Most of the delegations we get are in the same drink mention of that. So, uh, oh, yeah, we do the agenda. Moved. Yes, okay. Well, I was going to go there. Oh, I. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I it. Okay, now we need the uh, adoption of the agenda. Are there any additions or thing, anything for the agenda? No, so you're not not make oh. the motion? Uh, we, move the oh. we, we could move the resolutions to new business. That would be nice. We could have discussion and uh, the county vote as we would get electors at the conference. Okay. Um, is the resolutions or where in the agenda there? I don't see them on this board. There are no information items right now. Okay. So we can put resolutions at um, 7.4? Yeah. Okay. Any other changes? Um, well, there's, we just got this morning at 7 uh, so, our 13 point provincial egg conference, the dates are actually January 25, 27. Okay, so 11.1 the conference. Well, I've got another 13.1. Oh, 13.1. I'm sorry, you were cutting in and out there. Mr. Chairman, just for the. Uh, for the ease of things, maybe what we'll do is we'll adopt the agenda as it presented, and we can go around just as long as you point out where we're going to be at in the agenda. It's a little bit more difficult for you, but then it saves us trying to move everything right now. Sure. Okay. Okay. Well, we have kind of noted those uh, changes, I guess. If there's any more, we'll just move them through the meeting. But okay. Are there anything else we want to add to this agenda? Not. Mr. Nyberg has moved it. All those in favor? Carried. And um, so I got to get back to my own screen. There's no delegations for today. The reports will go to 5.1, uh, the uh, ASB administration report on page three. Hey, Ken. Talk of District 9, um, we have District 9 sales a little bit slower right now, but not many are really thinking about District 9 as there are no goals. I'm not too worried yet. We're there. Uh, we just did the pathway prep of its old pool and subdivision. Uh, spent some administration time in the office doing strategic plan on Monday with Council. We are now brushing all of the public work sites that were brushed and we sprayed. We're now hitting them with our big mower, trying to speed things up so that winter's not so busy for the mulcher. Beaver dam removals, only did one this fall. It was a big one, but we did one. Um, and we assisted with the planting and the watering of trees in Erskine. Just kind of hitting on some high lace. Water well workshop went well on November 2. We had, I think we had 20 people attend via Zoom. Uh, and I just got confirmation this morning. We were booked for a spring water well workshop, March 9. Unsure at this point whether it's Zoom or in person, so that's yet to come. <clears throat> Uh, we've spent some time in the fall here doing gravel pit inspections, uh, cleaning up some of the pits. We completed our talking with trees with those Toso, our 10 workshops are all done. 
So we're just trying to put some finishing touches. We've had a few things kind of go squirrely here with the latest COVID stuff. So I got to refigure a couple of speakers. So I'll keep you posted on that. And uh, we did a bunch of seating in Botha, Gadsby, and Township Road 38.4 from 18.3 or Generations RV, basically to the Botha pavement. <clears throat> we have a bit left to do on the north come springtime, but that's kind of that. <clears throat> Any questions on that report? Last thing that approach me. Yeah, um, Larry, go ahead. Uh, Dr. Quentin, Quentin, you uh, say that you winterized the those water well sites. You're correct. I know going through stuff last year, I signed bills for propane tanks. Do we heat them all winter or do we have them set up that we can drain them properly so that we don't have to, to heat the building? Oh, actually, um, the propane tanks are still on site, but we have recently given up, well, not recently, I guess, would have been spring or summer, we've given up our rental agreement with those bullets. They're still sitting there, but uh, Can West or Superior Propane will be removing those at some point. There will be no heat at all. They haven't been heated since, oh man, I'm not even sure, for a year, a year and a half now, they haven't been heated. Yeah, maybe it's closer to two years. It's been a year to winterize them. We haven't turned the heat on. Yeah, because it was just we paid rentals on the tanks, so I wasn't sure if that was the case or not last year. So, okay, thank you. Any other questions? At some point. Okay. Um, I guess I just more of a comment. I know uh, I think the it's the direction of council to uh, be more aggressive or continue to be aggressive on the. Uh, okay. I have to, could you start again? Every, oh, we just lost. Oh, okay. So he'll look back in. He should log back in, yeah. He's been having, he's having a bit of problems just with hotel Wi-Fi. Yeah, I, I see, because um, some of that stuff he here was old again. He was going in and out on the phone. Well, there he's connected. Yeah. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. yeah, we just lost you for a minute there, Quentin. But I was just going to say, um, I think it's the... Yeah. Direction of council, I think, through our our strategic planning, that we wanted to be continue to be quite aggressive on the uh, management of weeds and the gravel pits. But I think uh, the, it's so much better to be aggressive in the first half of the year than the last half of the year because the, the wormwood and stuff is so much easier to kill when it's smaller. So I was just throwing that out there, I guess, for this for discussion at this point. I agree. We will be more aggressive in the spring. Okay. No, that sounds good. Sounds we're all on the same page. And um, I guess for, I was thinking of the workshops and clinics. Uh, I know a lot of people maybe could get something out of um, a course on like, pasture management and uh, rotation, mm -hmm. pasture rotation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. well, Oh, okay. Look, Chair, what, what, what about rain, rain dancing? Can you uh, yeah. do one on that, please? Yeah. But, but you know, um, on a dry year, that's when pasture management and crop rotation is more important because, I mean, it takes the leaves to produce food for the root. And if there's no food going to the root, how can the root send the leaves back up? So, um, and that's what I see overgrazing and, uh, and stuff like that is uh, there's a lot of pastures that you haven't seen operators overgraze for many years in this year or two right now. And in time, it takes a long time for it to come back. Unfortunately, it's, it sounds like it's just the next year it's back to where it was. It takes a while. Yeah. And even if you have the same amount of cows, the same amount of acres of grass, if you rotate it, um, before it's too short, it, it comes back so much faster and, and you've got some cover to protect, you know, the ground from the wind and the heat. This, this year I didn't find that boy at that one pasture that was broken before mm -hmm. and it wasn't coming up. Yeah, it does need some help. Yeah, hey, uh, Mr. Chairman, if we could too, I wonder if we would be able to have a, um, like short vignette of having, um, 
pay calculation as well. Because it, it's it's sometimes hard to figure out where, like, I mean, typically what do you do if you go around and ask, well, what are you selling your hay? What did you get your hay for? And and then, but it, in actuality, uh, you know, uh, almost like this is the place to look for where you can get it. And, you know, they do put out the quarterly reports, uh, Alberta Ag does, but um, where to find it. And then after that, how to kind of calculate. What's on the job? What's up? Quentin's back. Quentin's I was going to say, Quentin, uh, while you were off, we had a little discussion here, and I don't know if you heard my point, but I was just asking, do you think there'd be any flavor for, uh, in your workshops, uh, pasture management course uh, and, and rotate pasture rotation type course? And then James had brought up, um, I guess, a hay pricing um, website thing. Tutorial almost, yeah. How to, how, what's the best way to figure it out? And um also then uh, ernie has uh, something i think he'd like to ask this one like when we start looking at budgets like we look at our reserves and like right now farmers with their pasture land they're dipping into the reserves but chewing it down so much there there's nothing left for reserve or reserves yeah and that's a whole um i guess a different management thing that they're going to be looking at too if they, if they need to reduce numbers or or get additional acres but so, was there anything else to ask Benton on his report? Yes, I do. Like okay. Go ahead. Uh, how many cases of uh, trichnine we got left, Ben? Uh, off, off of my head, probably 120. How many? 120. 120. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, why think you? They'll sell all that. Uh, and you're going to jump on your uh, those uh, old these are old uh, gravel fish to clean them up. How are we making up with uh, some of them? We had two that are really close, have we not? Sorry, guys. This is so actually, I'm going to feel this and come back yeah. here. You know. What was that? He's just rejoining. He is, he's still having audio problems here. Much you better. Just look any phone, just over the hotel phone. Mm -hmm. We could probably do that too. Um, I'm just going to try and I'll mute us in between us talking. Um, so just, you know, hands up before you want to talk in, or else you'll, you, you won't be heard. Okay. And the pasture management thing, um, sorry, but so I'll, I'll keep us muted now in between uh, us talking. If you want to uh, resume where you uh, left off, okay. The, and the pasture management thing, uh, our own half is fenced in them small pastures. And yeah, there's some grass left there, but uh, this year, even the guys that are rotating, have rotated them when we went to put them back in there, there's nothing there for them. So I don't know how they would rotate that, but anyhow. You know, well, this it's year, an exceptional year. Yeah, this year. Uh, they, say, hey, they used to have it on roping the web, but of course, the government uh, doesn't have that anymore. It's a real good site. But now it's wherever and where, whenever and whoever you can buy from. I, I don't really know I have any site that it's on you, Quentin. Prices and availability of hay. No, I, I don't know of any sites right now, but I haven't put a lot of work into that yet to figure out who all has it posted anywhere. But um, that is one of my things for this winter is to try and figure out where you guys were posting it and, and what they're doing with it. I have a feeling it's on Kijiji, uh, but yeah, I'm, not sure. about, I'm not sure about any other type of agriculture site. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, now Ernie, yeah. question if you can turn his mic on. Yeah. Oh. Pastor, no. oh, okay. And to Larry? 
Uh, just just as far as Kijiji goes, the braces that's bolted for hay on Kijiji is you got you'd have to be a, a real severe horse rancher or sheep farmer to be able to afford that kind of hay. <laughs> 180 to 220 dollars a bale just to depends on if it's a 400 pound bale. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I've been watching Kijiji very closely and there's nothing for Greenfield on there. And, Only the hay farmers. Yeah, very, very expensive. Table. I watched it earlier, and then guys with the money. The prices were insane. Okay, if there's anything else on the report, uh, if I could just um, talk to that. So, um, Alberta Agriculture still does have the quarterly report for hay prices that we put out. The problem with it is also like the last one was done. I think it came in. I was just trying to find it on my phone. Um, uh, but it came in at like or, or the first of October, right? So you don't have the final quarter where first October hay compared to December 31st hay is uh, typically a different price, right? Once everybody sells out. So, yeah. But it would be nice to be able to at least send people or at least give them some encouragement of where to go. Yeah. Right. Just, just to comment on that back to, to James, like you said yesterday, your, your brother's kind of mentioned an eight and a half cent, which puts you in a, on a 1400 pound bale, puts you in 1920 dollars. So it's, it's a lot of that stuff is almost half again overpriced, and if not higher. Yeah, no, that's this, this is that, that's the, that is the, the report from Alberta Agriculture, and it doesn't pencil out. It doesn't pencil out. If you got a cow calf operation, you can't make money doing that, right? That's kind of that break even point of where it, what the prices of cattle are doing and where you're at is not, um, just aren't. I mean, you're, you're not putting any fuel in the tractor. You're going to be feeding them with horse and buggy. Right? Yeah. If anybody needs a team, we got a couple and we'll give around two. <laughs> Okay, if there's nothing further, I'll ask for a mover for the report. I'll move it back. Okay, thank you. Dave moved. All in favor? And carried. Okay. Thank you. And then, oh, sorry. Okay, now the, the next. Uh, Piece on the agenda is 5.2, the Shelley Barclay Pest Update on page 8. So Shelley Barclay, we know, has um, somewhat replaced uh, mirrors to the uh, That's who we send our data to when it comes to um, armyworm, birth of armyworm and diamondback moth counts, grasshopper, wheat midge. All the pests they go through her. So she has made us a couple reports. You can see there starting page eight. Uh, has anybody got any questions? I guess just a slight highlight. Nothing big coming out of this better area. Um, from the most part, her the biggest concerns are down in the the Lethbridge. Strathmore area, and then uh, up north, um, all of our counts look pretty good right now. Okay. Uh, James has a question. Quentin, what is the lily leaf? You can go now. Try again. Okay. But Quentin, what does the lily leaf beetle eat? What is its main consumption? Sorry. What? What is? What is a lily leaf beetle? Like? Yeah. They, they say there's an uptick of the lily, new find for the lily leaf beetle. I'm not familiar with the lily leaf beetles. I have to do some looking on that one. Okay. Uh, my assumption would be peas um, and legume type plants, but I would have to do some looking. So it would go after our hay, the stuff that we don't have. Um, yeah, we don't have a lot of peas, but it'll go after peas. Faba beans, that sort of thing. So I, I don't see the grasshopper count in there. Am I missing it? 
Uh, grasshopper count was down on each. enough hay for the grasshoppers and yeah. yeah, they moved on too. I mean that's the only problem if our county suffers another dry year, they will probably be a problem next year. Uh, yeah, I mean there's there are two theories on that. You're right, we've had a dry year, we haven't got much for forage. Hoppers come in and clean up what's left. The other theory is that hoppers work on a seven year cycle and if you follow or believe the seven year cycle we have about two years maybe three before things get higher numbers with our hoppers great it, it takes them a little time to build up to the point where they are devastating any other questions on the insect report so I'll ask someone to receive it for information then. Just a motion to receive it for information. All those in favor? And carried. Okay. I'll jump into 6.1 business arising from minutes. Last <laughs> meeting. Is there anything unfinished from there? If not, we'll move into 7.1 ASB orientation. And when we'll let you leave that one. As you were rejoining, we were just moving on to uh, ASB orientation. Okay, so ASB orientation uh, has been set for February 24. That's the next available time. Uh, if you guys recall Kelly Jackson, she is our uh, what we used to call key contact, she's now called a liaison for the central region. So all things going well, she'll be in person on February 24. And she's going to highlight the acts and give some roles and responsibilities and basically let you guys know what you're supposed to do as an agriculture service board. <clears throat> and the do's and don'ts. Um, there is a manual in your in your i transfer to pad or transfer to ipad folder from last year you can do some reading ahead of time uh, but she will be like i said all things go well um, in person to, to give that that training to you guys we haven't had this type of training before so this is actually this is exciting because it, it really opens up what we're supposed to do and, and how we're supposed to do it. We being you guys, the board. And uh, that orientation with her, is it a, pretty much a full day, half day, or what is the plan? She said it would take about two hours. So it's actually going to take the entire ASD portion. Sounds good. And if there's nothing further on that one, we will move on to 7.2, the 2022 staffing levels. And it's in PG-18 in the package. Yeah, so just wanted to follow up after our budget talks and um, what we've done in the past, where we're going, give you a bit of a highlight of, of what the requirements of egg services are why we're looking at the staff we need. Um, I don't know, after after our Monday budget talks, do you want me to go into detail on this or you guys pretty well have a handle on it? Well, I guess highlight, I guess the most important piece is one more time, then that might... Oh. Mr. 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 Chairman, Clinton, I think um, Part of what we are here too is also this is a public meeting, so people may not have had the same discussion we had, or privy to the same discussion we had in our budget talk. So if you could give us the post notes of that update, that would not only inform us but also 
any of the public that's watching. Okay, fair point. So as it stands right now, sorry, what was that? No, there's nothing on our end. Go ahead. As it stands right now, uh, Ag Services has one full-time staff, as myself. Um, in order to run the equipment, we have we are looking at two operators for our roadside spray trucks, two weed inspectors, one side-by-side -side private hand sprayer, and one brushing of uh, brushing. Uh, Operator or pressure unit, I don't know really what to call them. Um, so what we've done is we've partnered with Public Works. I will rent or beg or borrow two staff from Public Works that will run uh, either both roadside trucks or one roadside truck in the side by side. Um, from that kind of that April till November. We'll get them going on those sorts of things and then hire some seasons to run the other spray truck or side by side, two weed inspectors and my brush spraying truck. Um, by borrowing two staff or sharing two staff with Public Works, what that does over time is give me good continuity with, with those staff to keep returning. Um, years ago, you know, you get seasonal staff in from college, you get them for a couple of years, and then they move on to full-time jobs. And just as you build that that good connection with them, they're, they're gone. Um, I will say I had two staff for, I think it was five seasons that ran my spray trucks, man. I didn't have to even think about what they were doing. They knew what I wanted done, and they did it well. So I'm hoping to get back there by having full-time staff share between public works and aid services. And that'll, that'll get us some better control and good continuity from year to year. <clears throat> so the roadside spray trucks, basically they're gonna run, I always say mid June, but it obviously it depends on our growing season. Sometimes we can get going the first of June, sometimes it's not till July. Um, but um, we get them going as soon as we have vegetation growth and they go well into the fall until vegetation is stopped growing or a good killing frost. Uh, the goal is that they control a third of the county, which means they drive every road north and south and east and west. Not necessarily spring, but driving those roads looking for unwanted plants uh, and then as time is on our hands on in our favor we either go back to the start and look for stuff that was late growth coming in or we drop into what we sprayed last year and pick up some of the hot spots where we had some problems that may need a second pass with some herbicide <clears throat> our two weed inspectors their job is to inspect the entire county, all lands within the county, including hamlets and shorelines at the Rindy River and the shoreline of Buffalo Lake. Um, we have a program that was started in 2012, the Priority Area Weed Control, or POC for short, to control absent wormwood. This is a program that was actually developed in Australia, and one of my colleagues from Clearwater County brought it back to Alberta, which a few of us counties have have tweaked the development and and created programs using that community-based system where we control on our own properties. So we have four townships of land and one subdivision. Um, basically, we help the, the farmers identify a good work plan and baby step them in from the outside of their quarter session to the middle. So in the first year, they spray outside 120 feet of their quarter section. As a minimum, you can always do more. But what that does is it creates a buffer zone between you and your neighbor. And if your neighbor is also in the program, or in that township, they are in the program, they're also doing that 120 foot outside wrap 
So you've just created a 240 foot buffer zone uh, between you and your neighbor. And every year you keep that outside 120 sprayed and every year you, you add 120 to the inside. So you slowly circle in, slowly strangling your weed to the middle of your quarter section. This theory was, was first brought in in 2012, and uh, when we had some cuts, we had to back out of some stuff and, and get back to the basics, and we're hearing about it. So I, I really want to keep this program going on. We want to reignite it. <clears throat> our other person, our side-by-side -side operator, uh, what I do is anytime a ratepayer calls in requesting us to spray their land. Um, of course, it has to be like 15 acres or less uh, because of the size of my unit that we use. I try and push as much as I can of that business to our local private land sprayers that operate in our county. <clears throat> and when they say that their summer is full, they can't take on any more work, then I'll pick up what's left. So that person is doing those types of controls. They're also um, inspecting our gravel pits. They're spraying our, our green spaces and parks, our right-of-ways, the bin hamlets. Um, something we've talked about quite often, and I've, I've reflected in the budget, is to start doing uh, back alleys in, in our hamlets, <clears throat> keeping our gravel as gravel and keeping the weeds from spreading from lot to lot. And then our brush spray operator, basically whatever Public Works brushes out with their mulcher, we continuously inspect those sites all year. And as soon as we have enough growth to warrant a herbicide application, they do so. Um, that trap was absolutely bombarded with work this year. It didn't sit very much. The handgun truck that they used can actually spray uh, in higher winds than our spray trucks because of the type of nozzle on handgun. <clears throat> so it was able to go when the spray trucks couldn't, but um, it's definitely a vehicle that is, that is busy year-round. I shouldn't say year-round, but busy in the, in the season longer than our spray trucks. Um, I guess the last point on that is uh, our weed inspectors also do weed inspections on the Red Deer River and Buffalo Lake, the shorelines. 